Folks, thanks a lot for the 70,000 subscribers, you guys are awesome. But we're not stopping here, let's push it folks to 100,000 subscribers. So give that support to the channel and subscribe and hit that like button down below to reach our goal of 153 likes. And now let's go for it. The Anime begins with an elderly couple taking care of their apple orchard. Then Shuzu Seitu apologizes to his wife, In Seitu, for not having the honeymoon they wanted due to lack of money at the time. But Ayn says there's no need to worry because she's happy with the life they had. Ian remembers the apple tree they planted when they got married about 60 years ago was nearby. Shuzu recalls the tree was broken in half by a typhoon and finds it, identifying the patch he made on it. They admire nature when Ian notices a golden apple on the tree, which surprises the couple. Later, the couple returns home while Shuzu regrets not giving his wife a better life due to his condition when he was young, noting that she stayed with him despite probably having many things she would have liked to do. Shuzu cries in the bathroom thinking about this, when suddenly he looks in the mirror and realizes that, for some mysterious reason, he had become young again. Startled, he rushes to Ayn and discovers she is also rejuvenated. The old man then gets excited about having a honeymoon with his wife. The next day, the couple's granddaughter, Mino, comes to visit and is surprised to see her grandparents so young. However, after the surprise wears off, the girl is enchanted by her handsome grandfather and sticks to him. Later, Mino's father, Yoshiaki, takes her home and the girl tells him that her grandparents have become young again, but he takes it as a joke from his daughter. In the park, some neighbors reflect on missing the Seidu couple, who weren't visiting as often due to age and health. But now that the two have rejuvenated, Shuzu is a hit with the elderly ladies in the neighborhood, while Ayn also catches the attention of the elderly men. In the past, Yoshiaki asked his parents to come live with him, because the couple's age was advancing and the son was worried about them living alone. But Shuzu refused to leave their land, which has been in the family for generations. While Yoshiaki tried to convince the old man to move, Ayn washed dishes with her daughter-in-law, Heed, Yoshiaki's wife, who decides to ask what her mother-in-law would like as she hadn't yet expressed her desires. But Ayn said it didn't matter to her. As long as she could be with her husband, anything would do. In the present, Cade visits her in-laws to drop off some ingredients that Ayn had requested. However, she is surprised to find Shuzu looking super young. He explains that his wife went to a community center meeting, acting calmly, because he thought his granddaughter had already told her the news. But upon seeing Cade's shock, Shuzu apologizes for acting so naturally. Completely surprised, Cade asks to use the bathroom, where she processes what she had just seen and is surprised to find out she has a handsome father-in-law. Later, Cade calls her husband, who goes there with Mino. Yashiaki is surprised to see his parents and realizes that Mino was telling the truth about them becoming young again. Then he questions Cade for not telling him the news as soon as she found out, but she explains that she thought it was better to tell him in person. At that moment, everyone notices Mino clinging to her grandfather and Ki scolds the girl while Shuzu makes it clear that he only has eyes for Ayn, comforting his wife, while Yoshiaki is speechless at the scene. But Ayn doesn't like seeing someone on top of her husband and reprimands him with a slap on the face. After the confusion, Yoshiaki, his wife and daughter say goodbye to go back home because he has to go to work. Then Ayn worries about her son working too hard and pets him, which makes the man remember when he was a child and she praised him for his hard work in the same way. Mino also feels like getting some head padding and Ayn grants her granddaughter's wish. Later, the elderly in the neighborhood are worried about the annual sports festival, because since the school in Manamamachi closed due to another school opening in Kitamachi, there are no more children living in the area, and the population is getting older, making it difficult for them to win the festival, not to mention the fear of someone having a heart attack during the event, which resulted in Kitamachi winning every year. The elderly of Manamamachi, unable to see hope, consider giving up. Until they see Shuzu and his new muscles as the light at the end of the tunnel even bow to the guy. Then they ask Shuzu to participate in the festival with them, making it clear that they won't accept no for an answer, and he complains about being deceived because he went there thinking it was a community center meeting. On the day of the sports festival, the head of the neighborhood council of Kitamachi, named Haisuke Igarashi, appears to taunt his opponents, saying he heard that Manamamechi might not participate in the festival that year, since all the participants are over 50 years old. He then shows off his young grandsons to the elderly. One of them is the star of the school's soccer team named Shouta Igarashi, and the other is the captain of the school's baseball team named Daiki Igarashi. The three laugh the idea of competing with a bunch of old people, acting as if victory is guaranteed. Then the leader of the Manamamaki Neighborhood Association, an old man named Sanano, warns that this year they have prepared a triumphant weapon, the Seidu couple. Haisuke, who knows the two, acts as if Sano had told a joke until the couple appears completely rejuvenated and leaves the old man and his two grandsons speechless. 
Hayzuk even thinks those are Seiju's grandchildren, but Shuzu explains that they themselves have become young. And so the festival begins with a tug of war where both teams make their utmost effort to win until a lady convinces Ayn to be the Minamimechi's cheerleader. As soon as she starts cheering, both Shuzu and his companions increase their willpower, leading them to their first victory. Ayn feels a little embarrassed for having been a cheerleader at her age, but she's intrigued to discover that her husband enjoys such things. Next, the relay race moves on to the three-legged race, where everyone runs in pairs with their feet tied together, to the finish line. Shouta and Daiki strive to make up for their loss in the tug of war, while Hazuk is hopeful for victory, as the two brothers have been practicing sports together for over 10 years and know each other's quirks and rhythms better than any other pair. At this moment, an elderly couple from Manamamachi finally completes the course, apologizing for being more than halfway behind, making way for the Seidu couple to enter the action. Then Shouta and Daiki find themselves close to the finish line and think victory is theirs when suddenly Ayn and Shuzu approach them and then easily pass by. The couple literally runs in a way that doesn't even seem like their feet are tied together after all. They've been together for almost 70 years and Shuzu knows his wife's rhythm well, adjusting his speed to synchronize with hers. And so the Seidu couple wins the three-legged race just like all the other games in the relay, leading Manamamachi to victory, leaving Haisuk and his grandsons frustrated. Shada and Daiki reflect that competing isn't as easy as they thought, while Hazuk is furious that Shuzu stole Ayn from him in the past and now stole his grandchildren's smiles. He then tries to console the two when Ayn appears to apologize for getting so carried away in the games. Hazuk asks if she shouldn't be with her husband and Ayn explains that it's not possible because Shuzu became super popular after winning the relay and is surrounded by people. Ayn then shows that she brought a meal for everyone to share and offers it to Hazuk and his grandsons. And so they eat together while remembering that it's been three years since Haizug lost his wife. Then in comments that Shouta and Daiki resemble their grandfather when he was younger, which reminds her of when Haizug confessed his love to her, and the grandsons are shocked to discover their grandfather's interest in Ayn and realize that's why he caused a rift with Shuzu. Then Ayn tells the two not to lament their loss and to strive to come back stronger in the multi-sport relay the following year, which makes the boys admire her and think it's no wonder their grandfather couldn't win her over, leaving Haizug furious. A week after the relay, Haizuk sends Shouta to deliver something to the Seidu couple's house to thank Ayn for what she did that day. The boy goes there and is greeted by Mino. Shouta feels awkward seeing her, who thanks him for the delivery and invites him in. The boy agrees to enter the house but feels nervous being alone with her because his family had gone out shopping. They both studied in the same class and Mino is the popular girl at school while he struggles to socialize, leaving him completely awkward and unsure how to act around her. So to pass the time, Shouta decides to fiddle with his phone, but Mino approaches him to see what he's playing, making him even more anxious. At that moment, Kate arrives with her in-laws and stands at the door, not knowing what to do. Kate panics at seeing her daughter alone with a boy while Shuzu is at a loss for how to interrupt their conversation. Later, the three enter the house and discover why Shouta went there. Shuzu is super friendly and kind to the boy, but Ayn and Kate already make him worried and feeling as if he's in a parent-teacher meeting. So to start a conversation, Shuzu asks his granddaughter if they're in the same class. Mino confirms and says that Shabata is smart and good at sports, causing Cade to whisper about it with Ayn, thinking he's a good boy for her daughter. Seeing the two whispering, Shuzu decides to step in and starts asking Shabata if he likes any girl, but Ayn stops him from interfering like that. Then Shouta says goodbye to the family and Mino tells him to come back whenever he wants. Then Keed and Ayn find it amusing how the two bid each other farewell so formally, meaning they weren't even proper friends. However, when the boy leaves, Mino ends up regretting for herself that Shouta left, quietly wishing she could have talked to him alone for longer. Shuzu overhears his granddaughter's comment, but decides to keep this fact a secret. Meanwhile, Shouta asks his grandfather to send him to do something at the Seitu's house, so he has an excuse to go back there again. The next day, Mino talks to her grandparents and learns that Ayn confessed to Shuzu first. He explains that at the time, despite being happy to receive the confession since he had always been interested in Ayn, he told her that it wouldn't be possible for them to be together, because at that time it was very difficult for people to marry for love and his father, Mino's great-grandfather, was very conservative and intended to marry him off to a friend's daughter. Mino finds it awful that Shuzu wasn't free to choose who he would marry and Ayn says that at that time, a person's family influenced others. Then the girl asks what her grandfather did and he replies that he ended up getting into a fight with his father and for a while he even considered running away with Ayn. But she managed to solve their problem beforehand. Shuzu says his wife was incredible at the time and called the girl, who was going to have an arranged marriage with him, to say she wouldn't let her have her love. 
Mino is proud of her grandmother and she says that apparently the girl already liked someone and only accepted giving up the marriage. Then Mino pleads with her grandmother to pretend she's the girl and represent what she said at the time. In feels embarrassed but no misses her husband looking at her with anticipation and decides to make this effort for him and her granddaughter, who are filled with pride at seeing the enactment. Walking in an apple orchard, a pair of young boys conclude that this farm business is for old folks and young people like them should head to the city, maybe even move to Tokyo, and make some cash. One of the boys believes he can quickly find a girlfriend in a big city, and speaking of which, they spot a beautiful young woman instead of the elderly couple who take care of this orchard. The girl notices the boys looking at her and says good afternoon, making the duo run away in embarrassment. A little farther away, they think she's the daughter or granddaughter of the elderly couple, until the woman's husband arrives and she calls him dear old man, leaving the boys even more confused. When he arrives with his truck full of apples, the man asks the boys to be careful on their way home and leaves with the beautiful woman as if nothing had happened. So the boys change their minds and decide they'll be farmers when they grow up. Flashback to the past, when the couple was still elderly, in asks to throw away some flyers and her husband agrees. However, upon seeing a dress on sale for 3,000 yen, the woman changes her mind and takes the flyer along to prepare dinner. The next day, Hyung Nain asks Young Shuzu if he went anywhere today. The man replies that he just took a light walk, so his wife is confused to see a package on the ground. Upon opening it, she sees it's the dress she wanted so much and assuming her husband bought it, she reciprocates with affection, but Shuzu sees that he's been caught. Later, they silently prepare dinner together, and then watch a romantic movie at Mino's request. And in this movie, Shuzu notices that today's youth are watching some extreme stuff, in his opinion. For him, even if there's no more kissing between him and his wife, it's much more important that they understand each other so well. Ain seems not to agree so much with her husband as she's paying attention to the kissing scene. When Shuzu draws her attention to this, Ain sees no other option but to ask him for something. Soon Shuzu accepts his beloved's request and the two reenact the kiss they just saw in the movie. Despite their efforts, Ain can't feel the expected effect after all, they've been together for 50 years, and they're no longer teenage lovers. With that, the man already assumes the stance of I told you so, because according to him, that's something for young people. Ain agrees on the surface, but inside, she's sweating. In the late afternoon, an old friend of the couple arrives at their house and asks Mino if they're home because she brought mountain asparagus and other gifts. As the lady had an extremely strong accent, the young woman couldn't understand a word of what she was saying. To save the situation, In appears celebrating the arrival of Mrs. Kakcha from the fish market. Kakcha doesn't understand what's going on, so she asks her friend why all the fuss. Ein replies that she just got a little younger, so the lady assesses Mino to notice that she's really the same age as her dear grandson, so she offers him to the girl. Then In hugs the girl and says she won't let her marry yet, but Mino would love it if it were with her grandfather. Later, the daughter of the couple's second son, Takahiro, fought with her father and ran away to her grandmother's house. Even though she's happy to have somewhere to spend the night, young Shiori doesn't understand how the old lady got so young like this. Ein offers something for the girl to eat, but she's sulking and refuses, because the bullying she's been facing has impacted her psyche a lot. Shiori is the classic school nerd and besides being teased for it, at home her father acts as if she has to meet his expectations, forcing the girl to study medicine. Therefore, the girl thinks she's lost everything tonight, her desire to study, her future prospects and her own father. However, it argues that just the fact that the girl is crying is proof that she cares and keeps fighting. When she was a child, Shiori said she wanted to be a doctor to cure all the diseases in the world, and even though she's changed her mind today, Shiori has never stopped being a beloved granddaughter. Hearing this, the girl bursts into tears and enjoys her grandmother's hug, besides asking to have dinner with her. In another flashback from the past, In apologizes to her husband for not being able to travel on vacation because she got sick, but the man is understanding and puts his wife's health first. Ein encourages him to take little Yoshiaki for a walk on the beach, but Shuzu thinks it's not the same without his wife by his side. Ein jokes that the guy is eager to see her in a bikini, so he teases that he also wants to make other guys at the beach jealous. Back to the present, Ein thinks that young people are really showing off their bodies too much everywhere lately, while she wonders what kind of bikini would make Shuzu happy to see her wearing. She knows he's a pervert, but maybe walking around in a short bikini is too much for her. Therefore, she decides to wear the white dress she received the other day. Peeking into her grandmother's dilemma, Shiori advises her to be more daring and show off that beautiful body God gave her for the world to see. Anne reminds the girl that she's old inside, but Shiori doesn't see anything wrong with her grandmother showing off a bit for her husband. Finally, Anne decides to think about it while making dinner, so Shiori tells her grandfather that the woman left and says he's hopeless because everything was a plan to convince Ayn to wear a short bikini. 
Suddenly, the phone rings and N answers asking if it's Yoshiaki. On the other end, the guy confirms it is, but since his voice doesn't sound like much, he says he caught a cold that messed up his throat. Suspicious, the woman decides to record the call, while the man on the line says that Ayn's voice sounds younger. After that, getting straight to the point, the supposed Yoshiaki says that an unexpected situation arose and that's why he needs 200,000 yen. So she writes down the code for the bank transfer, but before calling, she tells the guy on the other line that she's not his real mother, but if he needs to talk to someone, just call. With that, the man hangs up immediately. The next day, the guy who tried to scam Ayn ended up getting arrested. Watching the news on TV, Shuzu asks his wife to stay alert, but she knows well that after 6 p.m., the phone line turns into a free-for-all. Later that day, Ayn discovers that she no longer needs to wear her glasses because her eye has rejuvenated so much that she can see things even the young Mino can't. With a hidden agenda, Mino asks if Grandma can read what's written in the newspaper, and as soon as she repeats the article shown, Shuzu appears on the scene. So the girl challenges her grandma to read the words she points to, and reading one by one, Ayn completes the sentence. Darling, you are charming. And Mino uses that to say that the old lady is shamelessly flirting with grandpa. Five minutes later, the couple was forcing the granddaughter to complete the sentence. I like someone, and that person is. But before completing it, Mino tries to escape the embarrassment, and even grandpa feels sorry for the girl. Some time later, Mino is watching another romantic movie when she asks Grandma if she ever held hands with Grandpa. Anne replies no, because doing so is equivalent to shouting in the street that you're dating. As for Shuzu, when you get old, holding hands is to help each other not to fall flat, and hearing these things, Mino comments on the lack of romance between the couple. Later, returning from the neighborhood stores, the couple feels happy to have gotten some Chinese cabbage. Since the weather is cold, Shuzu notices that his wife is not wearing a glove on her right hand and inside, the woman is eager for her husband to notice. However, if he holds her hand, Shuzu thinks he's giving in to the granddaughter and he doesn't want to give the brat the satisfaction. In tries to drop some hints to her husband about being cold, but the man dodges them all. Suddenly, Anne looks at his hand, and with her heart pounding, she gathers the courage to hold hands with her man. Sometime later, they tell the story of how they became younger to their second son, Takahiro. The man doesn't know how, but he's sure those are his parents looking young, so he asks how they feel. And they both say they're great and full of life. Examining the strange situation, Takahiro sees that his mother's breathing has become steadier than before, and her pulse has slowed down. This convinces the son that his parents have become younger, so later he promises to deliver the results when they're ready. However, Ian's examination reveals that she has liver cancer, and since she just recovered from gastroenteritis, they recommend that she undergo blood tests and a tomography, and based on the results, treatment will be initiated. Upon receiving this news, Takahiro remembers that he became a doctor to save his mother, but in the end, all he did was introduce a good doctor to her. Watching her get weaker every day, Takahiro wondered what he could do. Even though he hadn't done anything directly, somehow he feels rewarded for everything he's done so far, and that's why he cries, remembering when he promised his mother he would be a doctor. In the past, as their children grew up, Shuzu and Ayn's love for the farm and their way of life grew as well, and everything seemed to be going in a great direction. It was sudden when the typhoon came and broke the apple tree in half. The couple did everything they could to keep it from dying and over the years, leaving every drop of sweat in the maintenance of that tree, one day the golden apple appeared on its dry branches. As Shuzu cuts the apple, he would love to place that beautiful shiny piece on his Shinto altar, but Ayn thinks that would be the same as letting it rot for free. Moreover, its appearance is very eye-catching, almost an invitation to be eaten. That said, the two finally share the fruit. Meanwhile, the apple tree, thankful for the treatment it received, finally disappears in a mystical way. After eating the apple, Ayn wakes up in a completely strange environment until she comes face to face with a gigantic hourglass. Floating in the air, the hourglass spins, restarting its count, and falls on the lady. Soon we see that Ayn was recounting her dream about the hard lass, and Shuzu says he had the same dream, so he's puzzled. Speaking of connections, today marks the 58th anniversary of their marriage, so Ayn asks if her husband wants to eat something different, like a cake, for example. Shuzu replies that he doesn't mind eating the same old thing, and that eating cake is for kids, but she knows he must be playing hard to eventually show a surprise as always. Ayn prepared red rice for tonight, and upon opening the refrigerator to check on it, she notices the piece of cake right next to it. Ayn throws it in her husband's face that he was bluffing, and he returns the favor by displaying the rice prepared by his wife. Ayn asks if her husband lies like this to the granddaughter too, so Shuzu replies that he only does it with his dear Ayn, because only she deserves the kind of lie. Then the two enjoy the surprises side by side as always. Hey folks, we're kicking off the new anime season, and if you enjoyed this anime and want to see more of it, go ahead and hit that like button down below. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel, 
We need your support to reach our goal of 70,000 subscribers. Every subscription counts and helps us grow our community. Catch you next time.